In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. Christ is in our midst. If we come to church on Holy Tuesday evening, and we listen closely to the Gospel reading, we will hear some very profound and heavy words. And as Jesus prepares for His crucifixion, we will hear Him say to the disciples, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to Myself. And very much Jesus gives a foreshadowing of what's going to lie ahead and very much sets the meaning and the tone and the theme for what was to follow. And indeed, it's about everything about Palm Sunday and the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And so when we hear Jesus use the word judgment, now is the judgment of this world, it might not be the type of judgment that we're thinking of. Very often when we think of the word judgment, we think of, oh, here we go, you know, fire and brimstone, punishment, I'm powerless, God's going to decide whether I'm good or bad, and He's going to act accordingly. Not in the Orthodox Church. Perhaps somewhere else we might hear that. But that, that is not the judgment that we know and that we teach or practice in the Orthodox Church. There is judgment. But the judgment comes from ourselves. From our response. And boy, is this week and the feast today even all about responses. And we cannot escape them. Every moment of the day, we are engaging in responses. And so when Jesus made His triumphal entry into Jerusalem, indeed, judgment came upon the people, but He was not judging them. God in His love was coming to accomplish His saving work, but His mere entrance into the world, even His entrance into Jerusalem, forced us to respond. To either accept, or to reject, or even to be indifferent. To just not participate at all. So there's the behavioral response, but then there's even the invisible response of our heart and our thoughts. What we think, we're always responding. And so even the salvation theology of the Orthodox Church, God does not cast us out. God does not reject us. It is left for us when we leave this world and we find ourselves in the presence of God, surrounded by the love of God, we will have to make a response. Do we accept it or do we reject it? In the end, God leaves it up to us to decide. That is what the church teaches and that is consistent with the love of God. But yet we are tested throughout our life how we will respond at that supreme moment. Will we accept or reject the love of God? Even the arrival of great and holy week, uh, Lent and Pascha and Holy Week commands a response for us. Will we participate or will we not? Will I try to fast in some form or will I not? Will I attend the services or will I not? Will there be any difference in my life during Lent at all? Any change of practice? Will I carry the Lenten yoke across at all? Will Holy Week make a dent in my week? Will I participate? Or will it be something I come to Palm Sunday, Holy Friday, and maybe the Agape Vespers because it's later in the morning? All of us will respond. And these responses that we make now are a foreshadowing of the ultimate response we will make when we are surrounded by the presence of God and the love of God. And so during this holy time, we see all the realities of our humanity. As you've often heard me say, the good and the bad and the ugly. Not to sound cliché. But we know that it is not all negative, right? So throughout the course of the week, 
we hear about the betrayal of Judas and the denial of Peter, but then we also see the faithfulness of John and the faithfulness of the myrrh-bearing women and many, many other examples. And we're all in there. And all of these things are the, re- the result of a response of how we respond to God. How we respond when we're sitting in church on Sundays to hearing the Word of God. How we respond to having taken the Eucharist that day even. And there's more beauty even yesterday at the raising of St. Lazarus from the dead. We see Christ Himself validating grief even. He lets us know what's healthy and what's not. We see it all throughout this week. It's not a sin to be afraid. It's not even a sin to doubt as long as we don't act on it. But even then, He gives us another chance. Second chances. That God never abandons us. Certainly, we'll get to that. But we see yesterday that when Jesus raised Lazarus from the, the dead, and he, before He raised him and He approached the tomb, He wept. Jesus cried. And in doing so, He sanctified grief and He let us know that it's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. It's not a sin. It's not a source of shame. And it's not weakness. So upon the raising of St. Lazarus of the dead, which is very much tied to the feast today, Jesus sanctified grief. And why would He not? What kind of God of love would tolerate us being in this brutal world with all of its struggles and pain and heartache and loss and then not allow us to grieve? Or would God be so unreasonable to permit us to live in this fallen world with all its heartache and make us feel like it's wrong to cry or grieve or shed tears or that somehow we're wallowing in self-pity? That is unreasonable. And our God is not an unreasonable God Yet often we are unreasonable with ourselves. And so we see the mercy and love of God throughout all these great feasts and in the raising of Lazarus from the dead. If Jesus wept, then it's okay for us to grieve. He sanctified tears by doing so. And we see also in the beauty of yesterday and today and throughout this week, and even in the impending arrival of the empty tomb, that God never abandons us though we probably deserve it. You know, an abandonment is really one of the worst things to happen to someone. It's a terrible trauma. It leaves a terrible wound in our souls. You know, when someone who loves us and is supposed to be taking care of us suddenly whiffs and fails to fulfill that role, it leaves a terrible spiritual wound on every human being. And yet, throughout all our sinfulness and all of our disobedience and all of our doubt and all of our fear and all of our betrayal and all of our denials, God never abandoned the disciples. And indeed, He'll never ever abandon us. Though perhaps even uh, we would deserve it. And so brothers and sisters in Christ, let's not miss out. We came today but it is only the beginning. And these services are given to us for about another eight days. And yes, we have the 40 days of Pascha. But when we leave here today, the beginning of our responses during this holy time is only just beginning. And the great tragedy is that sometimes we abandon God through our response. See, God will never abandon us. See, it's human nature sometimes when We're hurt. We're disappointed that we could pull away. And that is a form of abandonment. But God role models for us. Our responses to one another should never be contingent upon what we do or how we act. It should only be contingent upon imitating and mimicking the love of God. And so throughout this week, forgive me for being so direct, let us not abandon God as He draws near to Jerusalem today, and as He draws near to the cross, and then we hear about the disciples being scattered, and the Scripture says they all forsook Him and fled. That's all of us. So all of us will be making responses throughout this week. Let us decide wisely.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.